part two of my Flash CS5 tutorial where I teach you everything there's to know about Flash, with the final goal being to teach you how to do cartoon animation with Flash. Today I'm going to focus on the text tool. In Flash CS5 we now have what is called the text layout framework, which is just fancy words for basically the fact that it comes with a whole lot of different options, many of which you will never use. First you should understand to create a fixed text box you need to click and drag after clicking on the text tool in the toolbar. And once you do this, this area will remain fixed no matter how much text you put in it. I'm going to dump what's called Lipsum into this text box. And as you can see, even though the text continues, it does not make the box bigger. However, if I was to simply just click with the text tool, this would create a variable length. And as you can see right there, but I'm going to just stick with the fixed length here right now at the moment to demonstrate a whole bunch of things to you. So I'm just cutting and pasting that text back in there. I'm going to go ahead and select all. And of course, you can define whether your text is going to be selectable, which means whether you want people to be able to copy and paste it, or have it be read-only, or have it be editable. And you would use editable if it was in a form. And with this little guy here, you'd be able to define the orientation being either horizontal or vertical. I can show you exactly how that would play out. Here you would define any fonts that you would want to use. And if you scroll way up to the top, you can see right here what are called device fonts, and these would be used if you want to guarantee that your font's going to look the same everywhere that you would use it. But you could also guarantee that by using the embed tool. Now, if you would want to embed this font, meaning you want to guarantee that this font is going to be seen exactly the same on every computer, you would click on that embed button and you have the option to be able to actually literally embed every single possible character. You would almost never do this. You don't want to do this because it will dramatically bloat the size of your flash files. So what you need to understand is if you mainly use uppercase and lowercase letters, well then just choose uppercase and lowercase letters. If you mainly use uppercase and lowercase letters and numerals, just click on that. As well, you can go and add punctuation, but you almost never want to use all because what this will do is it'll draw a vector version of every single character, and that's going to make your flash files extremely large. But that is how you would be able to embed them. And then obviously you can increase your size just by clicking and dragging right here until it's the perfect size for you. Letting refers to the distance between lines. So this is kind of a font tutorial as well. And tracking plays with the distance between characters. It's all the only difference that you have right there. Kerning you're almost always going to leave as auto kern and that's actually a reference to tracking that is font specific. Hopefully, hopefully that makes sense for you. You can also choose the color that you wish to use and under anti-aliasing you can see here use device fonts. You would use that if you want to make sure it shows up nicely on every single the different type of device, even mobile devices. If the readability of the text is of the most important versus the overall ability to animate the text, you're going to have to make that decision on your own. What's more important, animation or readability? Normally readability is going to be the choice, so I'll just leave it right there. Rotation will also rotate your letters in a different way. This is also another tool that you'll almost never use. And then, of course, you have the ability to underline, strike through, toggle superscript, and so forth and so on. If you would like to provide a specific link so that when someone clicks on your text, they would go to a certain part of the internet, this is where you would provide that. You could also automatically make every single letter here uppercase by just simply coming in here and clicking on that tool or force everything to be lowercase and multiple other different things are available. You could also do similar things with numbers and also play around with how numbers are displayed in regards to width. Break will define exactly how you want to utilize new lines and baseline shift will define how much space you want to show in your text box either at the very top of the text or at the very bottom of the text. Again, another tool that you more than likely are not going to use very often. The alignment tools I'm sure you're well aware of, but also there's Flash comes with the ability to justify this type so that we can automatically have all the text stretch out and fill the box, which some people like to do. And down here next to text justify, you can actually define how you want these spaces to be placed so that you can justify your text, whether you want additional space between the words or you want additional space between each letter. By default, most people are going to use word spacing. And whenever you do do this justification, you want to define exactly how you want the last line in your text box to be justified. So you can see right here, if we come in and justify left, 
or we can have the last line centered, and that's all this guy does is pretty much defines exactly what to do with the last line that you have in your text box. I'm just going to undo out of this until we get back to where we were. And I'm also going to change my font to something that's a little bit easier on the eyes. There you go. You can also define margins, and I'm sure you understand that. You can go left or right in those margins. You can also define how much you indent at the beginning of a paragraph or how much spacing you want above or between paragraphs right here with this tool. Already went over text justification. And then you can also define whether you want this to be a single line or a multi-line, which is more than like what you're gonna do. And you can also define whether you want this text block to be broken up into columns and then how much padding you want between those different columns and also define how much padding you would like to add to the text box itself. Now, as you can see here, there's a little box. It's a red box here on screen. And basically what that's telling you is that your text is overflowing. That is what it means whenever you have this little red box here. Well, in Flash, you could actually define another text box. And it's very, very easy to be able to make the text continue on into this text box. All we got to do is come over here, select this, click on this guy, and a little chain link will show up on your screen. And if you click in there, it's automatically going to continue flooding the text into this new text box. But we still see another red box. So we're going to come over here and create another text box. Come back to the previous box, click here, and click in here, and it's going to continue to distribute the text until it runs out of space. So that's pretty much all the different things you can do inside of Flash. Now, of course, if you are not going to be able to guarantee that the viewer of this text is going to be using a Flash 10 movie player, you would then want to jump back and go back into classic text up here. And that just basically is going to mean that you have less options available to you. So that was part two of my Flash CS5 tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Till next time.